What's up, guys? And uh, welcome, welcome back on in. Guys, it's time for another one of our uh, uh, informative gameplay videos. Guys, today's video is going to be some red rank looping tips. Guys, I've been I've been out here doing my thing for a while now on Twitch and on YouTube, of course. And I feel like it's only fair that we share those tips and things and the processes and the, the mindset and the, the different kind of tips and tricks that I can share and offer you guys that kind of go through my mind when I'm in chase, uh, which helps me extend my chases, etc., etc. Um, so it's going to be separate. Separate to the one we've already done one before. Obviously, if you haven't seen that one, guys, I'll leave a link to the description down below so you can refer to that one if you want to have a little look back on it. So we touched on different things in this one, but sort of like advanced stuff leading on from there. So I'm going to talk a little bit again about Killer Shack, etc., and so on, and uh, and some other really important, hopefully really important uh, nuggets and information, things that you potentially might not have thought about before as well going forward. And uh, guys, if you are new to the channel, definitely consider dropping a sub. It really does help me out, uh, and I do appreciate it. it really does help me out a great deal any support is greatly appreciated we try and grab to the big 500 as well uh, and don't be like these guys guys look i'll show you the graphic on screen justice for best guys um, yeah, look, as you can see, currently 87% uh, of the people that are currently watching the content are not subscribed. So, guys, what the hell are you doing with your life? Drop your boy subscribe, help support the channel, and uh, let's hopefully get you some more amazing, informative gameplay for you guys as well going forward. Nice. So, guys, in this episode, I won't, I won't be specifically talking about, like, text or flashlight saves or anything like that. As I'm going to be, so if you're looking for that kind of thing, stay tuned. Those will be in future episodes. I'm currently working on those, and those are going to be there down the line. Um, this will be um, so, so if you're looking specifically for those kind of things, you will be seeing them very, very shortly. So, guys, in this clip here, we are looping Killer Shack. Pretty simple stuff. We should pretty much understand, have a rough understanding of what that entails now. Um, so, guys, a little bit of tips leading on to this. I usually stand here, guys, as you can see in the middle. I make sure that Wraith is coming all the way in. So, you want to make sure that the reverse sides of the side that doesn't have the door on i stand i make sure his body is coming through so that way he's not using his red eyes to mind get me back and get an easy hit as i make that vault i'm making sure that he's following me all the way around so that i can get that vault okay so there's a little marker especially on auto haven almost like where you can sort of get fast vault from on the ground there you can kind of see it the little gap on the floorboards where the um, floorboards have been moved so that's usually where I stand. Again, this will take like muscle memory, practice, etc. Um, doing it over and over again, repetition until you get the hang of it. Um, and obviously, the closer that you can get to getting that fast vault um, and keeping that distance means that you are less likely to take a hit there as well. And again, the main goal in chase, as always, being to um, to waste a lot as much as the killer's time as you possibly can. Obviously, we are eventually going to go down unless the killer unless we loop him so hard that the killer leaves us. Uh, eventually, we are going to probably take the down. However, uh, if we can waste as much of their time before that, that's a big win for us. Okay, so just to reiterate, we're going to stop here or we'll start slowly walking up to the vault, launch into the fast vault, making sure that he's coming back around. Now, the reason why we do this, guys, the reason why we're making sure that they're following in is so that we don't. Take Take the hit but also the reason why we're walking is because potentially if you didn't know that guys some people don't know that that if you start walking sometimes you will be breaking uh, bloodlust which is beautiful right or you could be breaking chase if he's not following up close enough behind you we're gonna be breaking chase and then that's great news for you because then you get another vault out of the window as well so that's something to be consciously thinking about when looping killer shack um so you're thinking guys so i know what you think you're thinking bez you're thinking what the hell man what if the killer pushes me around the other side all right, so I've got you covered. Okay, vaulting from pallet side. So similar sort of thing. There's an angle to do it. Again, back around, making sure that he is vaulting it, not doubling back. You can kind of get that angle. You can practice this again and again. In that clip there, I actually did run that quite wide. So you can practice that again and again and again, and killers are going to push you that way um, to make sure that you can still hit that fast vault there um, every time. I will say that I have noticed that on PC, it's a lot easier. Uh, it's a lot easier on uh, PC or keep on a mouse than it was hitting a fast vault from that side on a uh, controller. So yeah, so bear that in mind. Make sure you're cutting it as tight as you possibly can. Practice it, practice it over and over again. Make sure you hit that fast vault every single time uh, and make sure that we don't take it an easy hit there as well. Killer Shack, guys. Advanced lines of sight. So for like the Killer Shacks that you get on some on the old Cold Winds, I don't know about the new ones. I need to double check that. But definitely on Normal Haven, uh, there's little gaps and holes on what I call like the long side of Killer Shack. So definitely keep an eye out for that. Make sure you can, as you're looping it, if you are going to be running long side, especially if you're going up against a Huntress, you're trying to keep that big wall in between yourselves or anyone with um, like a Death Sling or anything like that. And you're trying to keep like an obstacle in between yourselves. You can keep an eye on them. Make sure they're not doubling back on you. Again, coming back around 
around the other side and getting an easy hit for yourself, Sky. Guys, I wanted to talk about this for a while now. This is the pallet. Well, I, I call it the pallet juke. There's probably a different name for it. A different name for it. But um, essentially, the idea behind it is we get the stun and we uh, hide where we've gone. We have to make sure that we wait for the killer to go into the animation of breaking the pallet and then double back. Obviously, bringing uh, perks such as Iron Will and things like that will definitely complement it as well. Gonna show you the killer POV as well of what they see. They can't see you doubling back, all right? Because when they go into that animation, they look down. This is something that, in my opinion, will help you out tremendously in regards to creating distance and getting that little bit of, um, and getting that little bit of distance that you may need to get to another pallet or to another loop or to another tile where you're safe and out of harm's way of the killer. Taking hits for the teammates. Guys, so important, but in solo queue and otherwise, so many times I've seen something going on. I try to do this as much as I can for the people in my team. If they're currently in chase, if they're being tunneled, you see it too often, you can get in there. If they're at an unsafe pallet or wherever it may be or somewhere is seemingly unsafe, you can get in there, take the hit for them and give them that little bit of uh, a little bit of a chance to find themselves getting to another area where again, they're safe, the chase continues. And again, you're preventing that teammate from going down. Chain freaking looping, guys. Well, so I like to call it freaking bears looping. This is something that you guys have seen me do time and time again, over and over again on YouTube. This is what we built the channel on, doing over and over again, whether it's on YouTube, whether it's on Twitch. And we get those long, long chases and those long, long loops. So the idea behind this, guys, is just understanding when to use a pallet and when not. We talked about that in the last episode, so I'm not going to touch on that too much. So in this clip, guys, that window vault has now been blocked to me, right? So I've got this, this single pallet gym over here. Uh, on the right side of Mitri, so then I can make that vault. I make sure that he's following me all the way around. Big distance, go back around. Easy stuff, guys. All the way back around, I've got the pallet for safety if I need it. If he's following me all the way around, then guess what, guys? I get that vault again. Eventually, by the time I get probably potentially three vaults out of this, Mitri's gonna open back up to me, and it's just all about being super efficient in chase. And again, this chase has gone on for quite a while now, and no pallet's been used. The uh, single pallet gym on the left side, currently now blocked. Now we can run it all the way. So if the killer starts forcing your Mitri the long way around, guys, this is the new Mitri, so it's actually different to the one that we originally had in the old video. Uh, you're just going to run this all the way around. Instead of trying to get a vault or activate a fast vault here, you can just go all the way around. And then you've still got the pallet there as well. If he does vault, nice, beautiful. Then you've got that option again to get back into the other into the other tile over there. On this uh, up here in, on, on uh, Coldwind here, you had one jungle gym on the left there, which was beautiful. So you could keep getting into that vault over and over. And then there was a jungle gym on the back as well. So as you get more experience and you get better at the game uh, and you do this more and more, you will get a better understanding or bit, better map awareness, I guess you'd call it, of what you can link together. And again, make yourself a little bit better at wasting the killer's uh, time, which is so key, so vital in this game. Okay, so just to summarize, guys, we are gauging the difference or the distance between certain loops or certain tiles. So for example, with Mitri, knowing where we're standing, that we can get a couple of loops out of this uh, through the vault, through the pallet side. And then once that blocks, we can then chain that or link that to the next tile on our left or right side and then keep doubling back. So in this clip, I'm actually running it actually not that efficiently either. So um, you could actually run it a lot better. Instead of vaulting it like I did there, you can keep going around, go back in vault, and then save yourself another go round on it. And if obviously the killer continues to chase you there, it's going to be wasting even more of his time in that scenario. Body blocking for teammates, guys. Body blocking for teammates. Again, something so simple. In this clip, guys, teammate trying to make it out to the exit. I'm full health. I'm full health. They're in an interstate, so they're one away from being downed. And the exit gate's open. We're trying to get it clutched at the end. I come in, take the hit for the teammate, and they're able to escape. Okay, in the event, guys, that that doesn't happen, guys, typical kind of scenario. You've seen this a hundred times before, right? Face camping killer, end game collapse. Some of us don't have BT. One body blocks, guys, in this scenario. We body block for the other one. The other takes the hit. We make sure, at the hook, that is, of course, right? So we make sure we can get the safe safely without being grabbed off. And then we make sure that we protect them all the way out, guys. We protect them all the way out so that they can make that escape. Hopefully, that was informative. Hopefully, there was some nuggets of wisdom in there, some gems, some things that will definitely help you out. 
Um, I'm obviously going to make more of these and other little things that go through my hand. Probably going to do side by side, like uh, comparisons and going through what I'm thinking in that precise moment whilst I'm looping or whilst I'm in chase and why I made a certain decision or a certain action that kept that chase going. And hopefully that will help you out as well. Um, so, guys, if you did enjoy this video, definitely drop a like and subscribe. Really does help me out. So, I'm trying to grind out here and get myself out there to that wider, bigger audience. And, uh, guys, let me know in the comments below if any of this helped you. If you're going to use this in your gameplay and all the best out there. Good luck out there in the fog. And as always, I will see you all in the next one. Much love, guys.